Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that is up for uh, crowdsourcing funding. This is a game that's going to be up on Indiegogo. It's called Zombies at Your Heels. Now this is a little bit of a special game because the creator of this game is producing it and selling it with the intent, or the, the sole intent, of giving all of the profits to charity for a charity that benefits children uh, who are unable to play video games and finding a way to make special equipment or special games so that, that these people can take place and to participate in video games. Um, so real quick, why don't we take a look at this game. It's a game about uh, trying to get your group of people to escape a zombie uh, horde better than everybody else. We'll take a look at what you get inside the game, which is basically going to be a deck of cards. We'll look at the gameplay and then we'll come back here and get my final thoughts. So here you can see the layout for Zombies at Your Heels. Uh, and what you're looking at here is a bunker, which is where our heroes are trying to get to. A zombie horde, which is trying to eat our heroes, which are going to be in the center line here. Uh, there's four of them right now because this is a two-player game. And they are arranged by their speed, uh, which is going to be a value on the cards here. So uh, you're going to see a speed value. You're going to see a victory point value, uh, three and four respectively. And then this is an armed character, which is important for the effects of some of the cards. Uh, in addition, she has an ability. Uh, and her ability is going to affect gameplay if you play her from your hand to the table, which you won't be doing in this, in this situation. Uh, but you can also use abilities of some cards cards on the table as you play other cards from your hand. Now, the goal here is to get your color characters to survive and get into the bunker, or for some characters to actually get eaten by the zombie horde, uh, which will provide you victory points at the end of the game as well. But for each character you manage to get into the bunker, you're going to earn victory points at the end of the game, uh, and obviously the goal is to have the most victory points, so you want the most uh, and the best of your survivors to get into the bunker. Now each player also has a deck of cards, uh, and they are going to be the rest of your survivors. So these are arranged by speed, lowest speed towards the zombies and highest speed towards the bunker, uh, which gives us three, four, five, eight, uh, and a different variation of victory points between those four, three, two, and one. Uh, now, what you can see here is that I have this deck of cards and I'm going to have a hand of three cards. They're going to be different heroes. And each turn I'm going to have to play one of these heroes from my hand to this line of uh, trying to be survivors or people that are trying to survive the zombies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it to the table according to its speed number. I'm going to find the closest person in speed and I'm going to put it right behind them. So we'll see here our closest speeds. We have a five and an eight. The six would go right before the five and the eight. So I would slide these over and my six would get placed in the center. And when I do so, I have one other thing I can do on my turn or technically two other things you can do on your turn. You can activate the ability of the card you played, and in addition, one of the cards uh, that you have on the table that has already been played, any one. So for example, I could activate this card which says, move any survivor four spaces forwards, uh, but not further than the second space in line. Then move Joseph to last place. So he's going to sacrifice himself in order to get somebody else to the front. Well, maybe I really want Ezekiel McCoy here to make it to the front. So he's going to move up to second because he can't move further than second. And then Joseph is going to move to the end of the line. After that, I can activate any other one character. Uh, and you don't actually have to activate, activate the one you played first. It could be the other one you activate first. Uh, but maybe, for example, um, we can go here, move any survivor that is ahead of Ezekiel two spaces backwards. Well, I probably don't want to do that. And actually, in this case, I would want to do that. Uh, but usually you don't want to move your own survivors backwards. Now, in this case, we have the tragic teenage girl who is in the front of the line, and she's actually trying to die. She wants to be eaten by the zombie horde in conjunction with the tragic teenage boy. And if you get them both eaten by zombies, they're going to be worth extra points at the end of the game. So maybe we do want to use Ezekiel to move her backwards. Uh, so he's going, to move Eze er, she, he's going to move her backwards two spaces, and that would be the end of our turn. So... Now what we do is we check and see, is one of our heroes in the front of the line? And in this case, yes, Ezekiel is in the front of the line. So he is going to go ahead and he is going to escape into the bunker. And he would go underneath the bunker and be worth victory points at the end of the game. If the situation were not that one of our heroes was in the front of the line, if Yellow's hero had been in the front of the line, instead the hero in last place would get eaten. Now this could either be a yellow or a green. Right now it's a green, so the green hero would be eaten and put underneath the zombie horde. But if it had been a yellow, you could have a good situation where, yes, one of your heroes didn't escape, but 
one of yellows got eaten, so that's good for you. But essentially, you should most of the time end up with the same amount of heroes in the center as you started with, and this won't always be true, but for the most part, it's going to be true. You're going to keep playing in this way until the players can't draw. You get to a point where one player can't draw, or in a two-player game, both players can't draw. Uh, and then you're going to end the game, and you're going to check and see how many points are underneath this bunker in terms for each player. So we'd go and we'd count up the victory point values for each, uh, each color. And also, if you have the Tragic Teenage Boy and Tragic Teenage Girl, in the zombie horde uh, area, they've both gotten eaten. You're gonna get some bonus points for that. And whoever has the higher amount of victory points is going to be the winner. Now they also have an advanced variant for this where each player is going to choose seven of their hero cards at the beginning of the game. And the game is going to last exactly seven turns. So you have a little bit more strategy there in trying to plan out what your heroes are going to do, uh, what heroes you want to use, how you want to play your game, and you know, maybe Plan it out a little bit better so it's a little bit more of a strategic gameplay experience than a tactical gameplay experience. Um, essentially, it ends the same way. Whoever has the most victory points in the bunker at the end of the game is going to be the winner. And that's Zombies at Your Heels. As you can tell, uh, not a very difficult card game, one that you can simply pick up and learn the rules to very quickly. Uh, and it's rather enjoyable. You just you know, play your card, try and uh, manipulate the line so that your players or your people are towards the front of the line, or at least not towards the back of the line, uh, to get them to escape in order to earn the most points by the end of the game. Uh, if this is something that sounds interesting to you and you'd like to support a charity in donating and getting a copy of a game, you can check them out, out, out on Indiegogo. They're going to have a link to it below this video here. Uh, I believe it's only $15 for a copy of the game. And if you want to pledge at some higher levels, you can get some customization options. So if all of that sounds good to you, go ahead and check them out. I'm sure they'd appreciate your support.